Hello, how you doing? I'm going to do a review on the Roland VR120 HD. They kindly sent this over for me. Uh, on the desk, here's a lot of my Roland products. I've bought their stuff over the years for the events we do. I've got their V40, their V800, their VR50 Mark I. I've got their Matrix switcher down here and the wv 2 Mark I. Um, the first product I bought by Roland was their Edderall range at the time with the V4 was one of their first ones. And so I had, I had two or three of them in the V8 and so on. But in the last couple of years, a lot more has been asked of these machines. And so Roland have been listening. And so in this one, which I'm very excited about, the VR120 HD, we have macros, sequencing, eight compositional layers, four picture in picture, two downstream key, and a lot more. But let's clear the table of all my other stuff and let's jump into this VR120. Let's go. Okay, I've cleared the desk and here we are with the Roland VR120 HD. So I'll tell you what I'm going to try and get across in our time here. Um, this is not a tutorial video, but it is a good sort of a take on this here from a person who's used the Roland products for many a year. And just the features about this that I'm excited about. So I will look at the top panel and just the interface, the hardware of that. I'll give you a quick view of the I.O., all the inputs and outputs and how, we, how much stuff you can connect to this here. And then I'm going to go into some of the key features, specifically macros, that scene memory recall, and, and then the PDZ. I'm going to look at them three things. Um, and, and a couple of other little things, how we dial all that in and control them. Um, so let's start with the top panel, right? So we have on the left hand side all the audio controls. Very simple, this left hand side audio controls. You've got your eight track pads here at the top and there's another bank and, and you can have your SD cards ready to go and keep loading in and swapping out as you wish. Then you have again the controls of all your audio channels from your HDMI to whatever else you might bring in uh, that you'll see when you see the I.O. options here. On the right hand side, all the video and streaming PDZ controls and stuff like that are happening inside this touch display, screen of 7 inch touch display. And there's a menu in there you can scroll through and I'll show you that as we go. Um, and some of the key things I'm going to look at, I'll show you to the monitor, but I'll show you these modes. This mode, mode, a bit hard of that stuff over the years. And I'll show you how we can dial all them little small things you have to do with like 20 different operations and scale and size and color and movement and then dial it on into a macro and record that just as a one button touch. The same way you do it sometimes with a stream deck or when you hit your scene like in Ecamm Live or in OBS, you'll hit your scene and you have it all laid out. I have it in a hardware version with all this I.O. Um, cause there's no real perfect kind of, you know, you, just can have, you can't just have software without hardware. You need your cameras, your microphones and stuff like that. And then also even the cloud one, you still need all the hardware. So to go into the venue, and have a direct AB streaming. So I'm just taking the, one of the I.O. in the back here is the Ethernet cable coming in and I can put in the stream key and start recording. But I'll show you some of that as we go through it. Let's cut to the graphic of the I.O. so you can see them all and I'll just walk you through that. Okay, you've got six HDMI and six SDI 3G inputs there. Um, and they've got perimeters with that and you've got scalers on the HDMIs as well. So. That takes away some modular stuff. If you remember back in the day having to get scalers and things like that, you'd know how much it's nice to have it all in, internally like this. Um, then we have the six XLR quarter inch jack combos for get, bringing in your audio sources in here. You also have two stereo left and right RCA phonos, and you also have uh, an RCA phono out as well. Um, regarding some of your outputs there, also you have three HDMI and three SDI outs. So one can be program, preview and another multi-view. If you want to bring a bigger monitor for yourself, um, you can do that. Uh, then you've got your sort of tally switches and you also have the two, you can see these two quarter inch jacks. They're for the kind of boss control pedal. So you can actually dial in your macros or, and trigger them with the pedal. Uh, and you can set which, which bits you want to trigger within this here, which is nice. Um, you have your XLRs left and right out, so you can do a PA system and things like that, you can do that. And lastly, you've got two streaming ports, a USB-C and a direct stream via Ethernet. 
you've seen the I.O., you've seen the ex external interface, there's some I.O. at the front, you've got two, a quarter inch and a 3.5 jack for your headphones, you can plug in there and obviously monitor the audio and see how that's going. You have your USB-A and your SDXC card slot that goes in there from the front to so loading up your media and what have you. So let's jump into the things I get excited about. To operate this, there's a really nice thing they've put in, which is called, you look all around this and you can see setup, 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 setup everywhere. And it gets you through sometimes four or five sub menus. If you think of this from a software point of view. So for example, let me explain why this, these setup buttons are very helpful for a quick workflow. So I say I pull up their graphic interface here. And as I say, it's a touch screen and I can scroll up and down on that. But say I want to adjust the picture in picture. So I've already hit that once. I'm scrolling once or twice till I find it. I like the color coding, by the way, Roland. The blue video stuff, orange for audio, it's really helpful sort of wee visual cues there. But we find our picture in picture. There's two, so we'll turn on, scroll, three, select the picture in picture you want. Then go into that, you can see some of the parameters. Jump into that, and then you get to the editing part where you can actually start to edit the size, the scale, the position. You want to put the picture in picture, the border, the color, and so on. Um, but that took about five different steps, five to six different steps, you include the scrolling to get to that. So this is where these setup buttons become really, really good and you'll see why. So I'll come out of this, hit the menu twice to come out. Uh, you can just do exit button, but you'd go through all the exit points. Um, so if I hit, it was picture in picture, wasn't it? Just the setup button, boom, one button and I'm into the settings and I'm already changing the scale and the size and where it's meant to go and crop it and put the border on all right there. Now you can use the wee dial here to go into these features and just scroll around it and select what you want. As I said, it's a touch screen, so you can also go in there. It'll bring up a wee graphic controller um, or you can just move it slowly. Just by doing this, if you push it down, it'll move faster on your wee, your wee value dial there. Uh, and then you get your picture in picture to the size you want it. I don't know, 36, roughly around 36. Let's just go there, back one, and then select that. So that's really good. That select button, setup button brings you into that. And it's the same for all the key areas of things you want to get to and all the parameters really fast. So you can exit there or hit exit here and you're out. Now, I'll quickly show you the display monitor here. You've got, well, this starts from the left. Let's pull up our trackpad, enter into it and there you go. You can see the color code that matches the way it tracks here. And then you've got little loops that are playing in there. And if I put on my headphones, you would hear them. There's some music and some wee jingles in there playing. Uh, and you can load up more and have them ready on your SD card. Delete, delete out ones, select colors and so on. So setup gets you straight in there again. Each one of these channels for the audio mixer, you hit setup and you're in. There's number two. Look at this. You've got all this graphic interface to help guide you through the controls of each one of these channels. So I can go into my EQ. I can get the lower, higher, mids just by touching this and moving it through and it's all visually very easy to follow uh, and get your gains and frequencies right there. So you get, you get, I think you're getting my point on these setup features. The setup gets you into the menus and into the parameters really quick. Let's go down into the scenes, into this mode section. Actually, before I go to mode, let's look at monitor. You've got multi view so you can see what I've got keyed up and ready to go there. Inputs, what's connected, I only have a camera and my iPhone coming out of uh, playing a keynote presentation and that's just running into HDMI. I do have lots of stills loaded up already from Roland's brands, some of my own brands and I can just load that in as I have with the Roland 120 there. And then program, so there's the Roland 120 was one of the ones I selected. Back to multi-view so you can see it. So that's the monitor. You can attach another monitor if you want a bigger view to see that. Um, but that's fine for me just working here. Now, let's go down to this mode section. So there's input mode. So you're, just, you're literally just selecting what you have here. So one and two, I can just cut between the previews there and say, okay, I want to bring in that presentation and just bring it over. Bring back the Roland logo over and that's fine. So that's just the input mode and connect whatever you have in your sources here and select them and assign them within the video input section. Let's go to scene. This is very exciting. So I go to scene, see all the buttons change colors. Some of them are not, there's no lights on, so there's nothing assigned to them scenes, but some of them have scenes already assigned. Let's go into the setup and look at that. And by just looking at it, you can tell what the scenes are. So if you're used to OBS or Ecamm and vMix, you know you're creating scenes that you can trigger either from your stream deck or from the software by pushing that scene button. 
but you'd let out your picture in picture again your borders your background your um, possibly logos and lower thirds um, graphics whatever you're trying to display over that and you can see here there's three picture in pictures on four nothing on that there's two stills that's probably a lower third and a logo um, and I like that you can see this very easy there's up to 32 different scenes which is great um, and you can just go into them go along and and create whatever scene you want so I'll just select one I know number four is assigned number four scene so if I exit all this menu let's go to program so we can see that and I hit number four let's put it up there in program there you go so it's three picture in picture just like that with icon I don't have anything fed into that I could I can select a camera source or a guest or something like that I'm interviewing or put a graphic in there or something but just by hitting one button and that's because how the macro is working and you can save it to your scenes as well and there's a whole thing about sequencer up here as well but you can see the color chains we've got input on that mode we've got scene and then we've got macros macros goes orange and there are already lots of demos in this just to show you it so um i will clear it i know i already set up a macro for eight which is to clear the picture and pictures that i just put up there as part of that so let's just look at this macro number one is bringing in four picture and pictures laying them on top of each other and then spreading them out into smaller picture and pictures in the corner with the video in the background it could be a motion graphic in the background but that's what i have here very simple but all one but one button touch so you see when it took to create one picture and picture but when you create like four of them like that choose and sign it and put your borders on it and move it and the shapes and then dial it into one button touch that's great that's what you see in software using stream deck and all when they do all that and they get the one button touch and they're giving you that control here on this way unit and a modular not modular and just one compact unit so let's look at some others get the clear let's just stack a few oh let's do that something similar want to fill the whole screen it could be the four speakers coming up at an event putting up their graphic and information behind them whatever okay clear it with the eight again I'm going to go to three which I know is a stack one there one two three and four on whatever sources I assigned to them which I haven't done here because I haven't got things connected in um, but you can see how quick these macros become a very helpful thing so that could be a presentation where there's a small picture in picture and then the person's presentation coming in filling most of the screen so they can see it on the stream or whatever so let me clear it on eight again and let me show you how to create a macro just for example so we go into setup and you can see all the demo ones there so there's 22 I want to select that there's nothing on it so the ones that are orange are already demos and titled in there so let's go into edit let's go over to 21 to 30 hit 22 and as you can see it's blank or four already has actions saved so this is how you save actions I'll just repeat what I did there in four so I want to hit record so everything I do here is going to it's going to know I'm going to want picture in picture in which I've already created I want a picture in picture on the other side already created let's just do the four again just so you can see it and you can see everything I've added in is going into that so rather than having to press the four of them now I can apply that and I can assign it as I already have I'm already on 20 is 22 I picked there or 21 I think it's 22 we'll see Hit apply it was 22 and it's now turned orange and I can rename that rather than calling it 22 I can go in like I did the last time and I can just go picture in picture and four now and then hit return and so now if I go out to execute I can see that 22 is now picture in picture four so let me just clear that exit from that and if I hit the menu again oh sorry wrong one if I hit setup hit picture in picture four they come up yeah, so you can see how that's working. Very simple, record your macros, set up your scenes, and you can move into your scene, select all the ways you want that letter, and they're also on call, so it's a wee bit similar in that sense. Um, love that, it speeds up your workflow. Let's go back to input, and you can see the colors changing when you're in different modes down here. Back to input. So let's look at stream record, just so you can see that quickly. If I hit stream record, up comes the settings straight away and the setup bit so you can see in here I can record stream out and if I hit that it also can record to video so it'll do a video file and an audio file as well as stream out 
and all that will happen at the same time in your SD card. And it's got to be the SDXC, but it says it on the side there um, if you want to record like that. So that's simple enough. And you can go into your settings and put in your stream key there. Um, I was just hitting number two tab at the top there. And you can have service one and two. Exit that. Oh, let's go back to my mode. Hit eight, clear all that. And back to input normal. So anything else? Yes. PDZ control, love this. Um, let's zoom in. So I'm happy with that. You can see it. Exit. So menu, scroll down. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Scroll down to camera control. Now, obviously, you've got to set up your network and put in your parameters there in your LAN. But if you're just using camera control and you've got that already set up, jump into it. And there you go. You can see the interface, the graphic interface for controlling your PDZ cameras. You can control 12 of them here. Um, and then you can set it as a preset. Um, so one could be a wide shot of the stage. Number two camera could be a cut it into the speaker. Number three could be a crowd shot, whatever, whatever your preference is. Um, but you can have 12 cameras all set up. You need to got three or four. Um, you can make it feel like you have 12, but you can just put in eight presets there just by having different looks that you can just cut to. So there's the wee positioner, like wee joystick that you can position the camera. And then you've got your zoom wide and telly. So you can zoom in or go wide on the shot and set that. And again, set that to your camera preset. Very good. Love that. OK, so let me just summarize this again. Left side's all your audio controls. Right side's all your video, streaming, PDZ, all your macro and scene selection controls. It was all happening on the right hand side. All them we set up buttons can get you into like four or five sub menu steps to get to the real settings. And then you can dial all that in just like you do with the stream deck, put it in the macro or put it in the scene selection and just have one button that will trigger it and one button to clear it. And you can, in your mode section, just go your normal input. Um, all this IO for connecting HDMI audio, SDI for running longer camera rods, um, your headphone jacks, very compact, lovely, all in one unit. So for example, if you see on my desk here, um, how modular this is, and it's a bit more spread out. I've got my Rodecaster Pro 2 to manage my, my uh, audio coming in. It's got, we track trigger pads, audio pads as well. And it's got some, um, yeah, other things in there as well. Then you have my A10 Mini Extreme ISO. Um, and that's just HDMI and the audio inputs are only 3.5. So there's no XLR or combo jacks. So you can see where the money starts to mount up. So if you're putting some of the features of this audio mixing in here, so that Rodecaster is 700 pound or so, the, uh, the two, uh, Rodecaster Pro 2. For the ISO Extreme, it's about 12, 1300 pound. For my Alphatron PDZ controller, I forget what I paid for that, four or five hundred pounds or something like that. And then if you want to play back videos loops into this, then you need to, for Blackmagic, you need your um, HyperDeck. 4K one's about 12, 1300 pounds to play back videos and so on and queue all that up. Uh, and then it starts to spread out, it's a lot more modular. So it'll come in with a compact thing with a screen display as well and a touch display, which none of them, well, the, the audio one does for the Roadcaster, which is good, but you're getting controls of that here all in this with a lot more I.O., a lot more professional inputs. Um, really good, really good. So that's the things I'm excited about, how it'll speed up the workflow, how easy it is and how intuitive it is to get your head around and operate it from a hardware perspective. I've, I've done it in software and some of the cloud-based ones, but to have a hardware one, this is great to see. Um, so we snags, I'll just mention two here. Um, the, I'm sure this, the first one will get fixed probably in software, if it already hasn't. There's a firmware update. I just didn't download it before I did this video. But it wasn't playing back some of the uh, the video files in the menu. When you go into it, you scroll down to video playback. You go in there and you import your video files from your SD card or your USB memory card. Every time I tried to load in the video I had on the SD card, the play edit said wrong resolution or wrong bit rate. So I tried exporting it from my video editing software to different um, bit rates and stuff and it wasn't working. So that's probably a fix for Ronan to work on. That's okay. I'm sure it will get there. They wouldn't have put it in there if they didn't want it to work. So the other little snag, this is more for the Roland uh, hardware engineers, the guys who designed this shell for this, for 
all this is great. Not a big thing, but it, 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 it was frustrating sometimes. There are the HDMI ports are vertical, which I like because you can get more HDMIs in. But the max size of the like the wee plastic connectors that go around the HDMI port is 2137 max. So uh, I'll put some graphics up on this. So the wee screws were hitting and stopping some of the HDMIs, like even like the Amazon Basics wouldn't go in because it was like 22 millimeter. And some of the ones I have are as big as 24 millimeter. So if you're gonna uh, just do another iteration of some time, if you just move them screws up a wee bit higher, um, um, for us here at it, we just need to know that it's, it's gonna fit in. And I know I've got lots of cables that do, so I was lucky enough to have that. Or if you find a brand you know fits in, stick with that and get your different lengths. You just don't wanna buy a big long one that was a bit more expensive and find it's too wide to fit in the port. Um, so um, yeah, these are things that, I, you know, you can work around, you can solve them. But they, they were two wee snag lists, that video playback and the um, where the screws are just a wee bit higher so it can take in some of the wider, broader HDMI cables that go in there. Now, saying all that, what would I like to see in the future? Here, here's me dreaming. Uh, I'll go for... I'll go for two things again, maybe just keep that uh, moderate. I would love to see in your PDZ control another wee section here on the end with a proper joystick and zoom rocker and some of the wee dials for controlling the speed of the zoom, open up Zyra, uh, Iris control and stuff like that. To have that built in would be great. From a volunteer point of view, just having that on the side, I don't know anybody has all this kind of control plus that built in. That's number one, I would love to see that built on. Number two, I love your audio trigger pads. I would love for this to be also video trigger pads and I would like it to be like your scribble, uh, your scribble keys you have like on your audio mixing desk, your React ones I used to have, where you can put in the icons of electric guitar or keyboards and stuff. Or just like the Stream Deck, you can have little thumbnails that come up here that show you a little thumbnail of a video you're gonna play or an image you wanna pop up or a graphic and to have it triggered there visually would be great. There's two suggestions for the future. I'm sure we'll all get there eventually, but to have that be a bit more visually, because um, when you're working on different shows, sometimes you just want to see it. I can remember it, of course, I, I can with it. If it's just a um, little bit of music or play, that's fine, I don't have to think about it. And it's not too far to get into the set, and as I said, if I can bring it up and look at it, I can see what it is and I can name it. But it'd be nice to have it visually at that level, just going, oh, that's actually the soundtrack, that's the countdown time center, wherever I want to call this. Um, this is applause, or this is a wee video clip and I can see a wee thumbnail, that would be lovely. Just thinking into the future. Now, I know the price point is different for all these because of what the features you're getting. It This comes in about five and a half to six thousand sterling. Um, and obviously if you add all these different modular things up, they get close to it, but it's not as a one compact like this, which is great. Um, yeah, I'll finish there. Uh, I like this, I would use this. Um, so thanks for sending me it, Roland. Listen, people, if you like this, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And the last video, I got about 12,000 views and didn't get that many people subscribing, even though it was really popular, which is great. Um, but I just need to get the subscri subscriptions up so I can try and monetize the channel a little bit. You help me out there. That'd be great for my time and, uh, and investment and all this. Wonderful, wonderful. Listen, catch us all later. Have a great day. Catch you later.